Hi, I'm Miss Deanna. I'm with Children's Ministry, and today I have another book to read for you. It's What's So Wonderful About Webster, and it's written by Stephen Kendrick and Alex Kendrick, and it's illustrated by Daniel Fernandez. All right, so let's find out what's so wonderful about Webster. Attention everyone, announced Miss Pumpernickel. Friday is field day. I hope everyone in our fourth grade class will participate. The winning class gets an ice cream party. Yay, cheered the kids. Oh no, Catherine said. We will never beat the fifth graders. They are really big. But I can run as fast as a bolt of lightning, said Caleb. I can jump rope a million times without stopping, bragged Hannah. Maxwell's hand shot up. I just got a frisbee and can do the frisbee throw. Emma bounced in her seat. I can stand on my head for 10 minutes without falling over. Hey, Webster, whispered Herbert. What should I do for field day? You did well at the egg la race last year, answered Webster. Oh yeah, great idea. What are you going to do? Hmm, I can't tell you, it's a surprise, Webster mumbled. Webster's hands started to sweat. He couldn't think of anything he was good at, except for maybe eating peanut butter, but he was pretty sure that wasn't an event. The next day at recess, Webster watched Maxwell throw his new Frisbee. It landed in a tree. Aren't you left-handed? Maybe you should throw with your other hand, Webster suggested. Great idea, Maxwell said. Webster walked to the corner of the playground to try his new jump rope. After four jumps, he tripped and fell into a bush. Hannah giggled. Maybe you should jump instead, Webster said. Hannah untangled the rope and began to jump really fast. But she did not jump a million times, he noted. Only 67. You can borrow it if you want to practice, said Webster. Really? Thanks, said Hannah, and she ran off. After school, Webster asked his mom for some eggs and tried carrying them across his yard on a spoon. But he kept dropping them and soon his yard looked like it had been bombed by an army of chickens. The next day, Webster tried throwing his Frisbee, but his neighbor's dog, Barfy, caught it and ran off down the street. Webster always thought Barfy was the worst name for a dog. Ugh. That night, Webster tried standing on his head. He his face turned red and he felt dizzy. Then he knocked over a chair and scared the cat. By Thursday, Webster had tried and failed at every event on the list. Field day was going to be the worst day of his life. Oh, poor Webster. Let's see what's gonna happen now. At dinner, Webster told his parents the tragic news about field day. He asked if he could stay home the next day because he wasn't feeling well. But mom said he didn't have a fever. Why don't we ask God to help you find what you're good at, she said. But I'm not good at anything, Webster muttered. Not true, said his dad. You're good at lots of things. Webster wasn't so sure. He could only think of one thing he was good at. He walked to the kitchen to find some peanut butter. The jar was empty. He dropped his head and slowly shuffled back to his room. At bedtime, mom and dad prayed for Webster and gave him a big hug. After they left, he remembered a story the Bible, in the Bible and got down on his knees to pray. Please God, will you make it rain for 40 days and 40 nights and flood the whole earth so field day will be canceled tomorrow? Amen. <laughs> well, that only happened one time, so let's see what happens now. Webster woke up early and looked out the window, and what did he see? The sun was shining brightly. Then he remembered God had promised Noah that he would never flood the earth again. Webster sighed. At breakfast, his dad read Psalm 139.14. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. Well, I'm not wonderful, Webster said. You know, his dad said, the Bible always tells the truth. It says God is good and he never makes mistakes. He makes wonderful things. And he had a really good idea when he made you, Webster. So you are wonderful, said his mom, even if you don't see it sometimes. 
Do you guys know that? You're all wonderful. Sometimes we really don't see the things that others see. Webster didn't feel wonderful. He felt like a big loser. Maybe it'll snow in the next hour and school will be canceled, he thought. Or a giant earthquake. Or all the teachers will suddenly get the chicken pox. Then everyone will have to stay home. Oh, he really didn't want to go to field day. The playground was decorated with banners and balloons. When field day started, everyone cheered, except for Webster. He handed out water and wished he was invisible. Hey, Webster, shouted Herbert. Have you done an event yet? Uh, not yet, he answered. I've been really busy with, you know, water. Principal Diaz blew his whistle. Gather round, everyone. These three classes have made it to the final round. He held up a sign that said, Mr. Dunbar's fifth grade class, 75 points. Miss Hall's third grade class, 71 points. Miss Pumpernickel's fourth grade class, 68 points. Oh no, the fifth graders are winning, whispered Hannah. Oh, she was a little scared about the fifth grade class. Each class will choose four runners for the final egg relay, said Principal Diaz. The winning team will gain eight more points for your class. Miss Pumpernickel said, Webster, you helped give out water all day. I'm going to let you lead the egg relay and choose our final team. Everyone stared at Webster. His heart was pounding and his hands were sweating. Um, Caleb, Mia, and Peter run the fastest, so I choose them. Great choices, said Miss Pumpernickel. But I think Herbert should have my spot, Webster said. What, said Miss Pumpernickel, why? Herbert is better than me and didn't drop any eggs last year. Webster handed Herbert his spoon. Wow. Oh. When the whistle blew, everyone cheered. Soon, the whole field was covered with broken eggs. Everyone had dropped at least one, except for Herbert. Oh, look at him run. He still has his egg. Principal Diaz stood up to announce the result. For the most eggs carried, Miss Pumpernickel's class gets eight more points for a total of 75 points. They are now tied for first place with Mr. Dunbar's fifth grade class. As a tiebreaker, we will have a tug of war to see who will win with field day. Everyone in Webster's class sighed. They knew they could never beat the fifth graders in tug of war. Everyone that is except for Webster, who raised his hand. Uh, yes, Webster, asked Principal Diaz. Webster cleared his throat and said, 68 plus eight is 76. Principal Diaz stared at Webster with a confused look and then looked back at the scoreboard. Oh my, I'm so sorry. You're right, Webster. Miss Pumpernickel's class actually has 76 points. That means they win field day. Yay. Webster's class went wild with cheers. After the medal ceremony, they hurried to the room for ice cream. Class, I am so proud of you, announced Miss Pumpernickel. I want to especially thank Webster. But I didn't score any points or do anything, he muttered. Not true, she continued. You picked the winning relay team. You gave your slot to Herbert and you had the math skills and courage to tell Principal Diaz our class had won. Maxwell raised his cone. Webster helped me with the, my frisbee. I used my left hand and got first place. He let me use his jump rope and I got third place, said Hannah. Class, said Miss Pumpernickel, raise your hand if you got hot today and Webster gave you water. Almost everyone raised their hands. Webster, you may be the most important person on our team. We would not have had one, field, had one field day if it hadn't been for you. Webster couldn't believe his ears. He ended up smiling the rest of the day. Wow, he was so sad this morning. He didn't want to go to school and look how it turned out. At dinner, he told his parents all about field day. Webster, I'm so proud of you, his mom said. We prayed for God to show you what, that you were good at, what you were good at, and he answered that prayer. That's right, son, his dad said. You are a leader. Jesus said that good leaders help others and you helped your whole class today. I wouldn't be surprised if one day you became a principal or a pastor or maybe the president. 
Webster's eyes widened as he listened to his parents' encouragement. That night, Webster stared at his medal. He looked up and whispered, Thank you, God, for not flooding the whole earth today. And thanks to mom and dad and my friends and my teacher. And thanks for helping me good, be good at math and at being a leader. And thanks for making me. I'm glad you did. You must be a good leader too, God. The best ever. And when I grow up, I want to be just like you. Wow, friends. Isn't that amazing how Webster was so discouraged and didn't think that he was good at anything but he prayed his parents prayed for him and he was just being himself and God showed him that he was good he had good skills he may not have been able to be good at sports or anything for field day but he was a good leader and he was brave and he was able to tell um do his math and he realized that he had some awesome skills that he had. So friends, I hope that you had fun today in our reading time. I pray that you will be blessed and stay safe. God bless you.